Welcome to the Trust Factor Radio, bringing you interviews and insights to unlock the power of the subconscious mind to create authority, credibility, and trust with your host, the authority architect and best-selling author, Neil Howe. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is Matt Ward. And Matt is the founder of Breakthrough Champion, and in 2002, Mark started a website agency in Concert Web Solutions, which he in turn sold in May of this year, 2018, for seven figures. Congratulations on that. So that he could focus on helping businesses get more word of mouth referrals. His pending book, More, uh, word of mouth referrals, lifelong customers and raving fans is set for release in the fall of 2018. Uh, Matt is a professional member of the National Speakers Association and a podcast host himself of the popular small business podcast Square Peg Round Hole. He's a 40 under 40 recipient and chamber small business owner of the year. Uh, lots of exciting stuff to talk about here, Matt. Welcome to the show, Matt Ward. Thanks for having me on, Neil. I greatly appreciate it. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, this dynamic that you have gone through being a website or a digital agency for many years and scrubbing all that and going to straight word of mouth. Uh, most of the people that I talk to on this podcast are the digital evangelists. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to hearing what you've got to say about uh, word of mouth marketing. So take us back a little bit uh, and let us know a little bit more about yourself, uh, how you got going in this industry and who it is that you help now. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I uh, was in the software testing world coaching youth football part-time and a parent walked up one time and one day and said, why don't you start a web company? And I said, what do I know about that? Hmm. And uh, I still, to this day, 16 years later, think, what do I know about that? Uh, because it changes so much. Um, I got started, a, you know, part-time, uh, probably about 18 months, and then went full-time in January 2005. Uh, built a team of eight with a number of contractors, and uh, uh, we are just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. So, uh, we... We were building websites and doing web hosting and maintenance. We focused on the recurring revenue side of the house. And so a lot of the, probably about 70% of our revenue every month was recurring, which was really great for stability uh, mm. wise. Um, I started doing a lot of business development speaking and networking. That was my primary role. And I found that I really enjoyed the speaking part of it. Uh, I really enjoyed sort of, impacting business owners, um, both one-on-one -on -one in sales consultations, networking in groups, and also doing the speaking stuff. And so I started doing a lot more of that and uh, just decided that's what I wanted the path to be. And so I sold my agency to one of my employees and moved on. And uh, it's, it, it was a great ride, 16 great years, uh, lots of ups and downs, the economy and everything. But now um, I'm focused on what I learned from that business and how I built my business was through word of mouth. Um, so I've turned that into a book, which by the time this podcast goes live, it, it's going to be out there. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just took the practical things that I do on a daily basis and created my own IP around that. It's really nothing new. The stuff that you know, there's no new information out there. It's just repackaged in a different way so people can learn it in a different way these days. And mm -hmm. um, that's what I did with this book. I, I gave 40 sort of clear focused points on how you can connect deeper with other people and, and have more meaningful relationships and have how those turn into word of mouth referrals. So that's what I do now. And I, I help business owners of all types um, uh, get more word of mouth referrals you know, in a more predictable way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I suppose when you're working with word of mouth as well, you will get referrals from all different businesses. Is that what you found or have you found that you really stick within one niche? Yeah, so I think, I think that's a, every business is different and I think it's certainly uh, best if you can figure out where your referrals come from. So in my web agency, my referrals, it was great to get referrals from clients, but that's not where my primary source of referrals came from. 
My primary source of referrals came from IT companies, people that did break fix and manage services, and they would get called for websites. Very rarely were these IT companies even my clients. So don't think for a second that word of mouth referrals is just coming from customers and clients. That's not the case at all. Uh, so I had 35 partners uh, in the IT world that would send me referrals um, every year. And I didn't need a ton of those to be incredibly successful. But each one on average would send me one a year. That's 35 strong new client referrals. Mm -hmm. uh, and they weren't leads, you know, Neil, they weren't, they weren't like leads. They weren't really tire kickers. These were people who were coming, highly referred, ready to buy, ready to write a check, uh, ready to have their their problem solved. And so I, my, my job was to make sure that the IT people really knew who I was and that I was in their corner all the time, that I cared about their success so that they would care about my success. Right. And I think that's a really important point there that it, this is not leads coming in when you get referrals. This, this is somebody that is primed and ready. Uh, they've got that recommendation they know all about you probably already before even getting on the phone. And like you said, they've got their checkbook or credit card in hand and they're ready to get that solution to the problem. So in looking at your past business, uh, what was the major problem with them? Was it just they were trying to get leads, leads, leads all the time for their business? Uh, you mean my, my clients in the agency? Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I think I think companies when they come to a website agency, they're saying, you know, they're they're saying I want to rank number one, right? That's usually what I heard, but I don't think that's really what they want, right? Because if you dig down deeper, if you keep asking, but why? But why is that? But why is that? But why is that? If you ask that three times, you're going to get to the root of the problem. The reason they wanted to rank number one, because they wanted more sales. Why do they want more sales? Because they want more revenue. Why do you want more revenue? Because we're not profitable or whatever, right? And so if you can help them really uncover that the problem isn't that they want to rank number one on social media or, or search, you know, on Google or whatever, the reality is they want more business. They want more sales. And so if I can help them do that, uh, then, then they're going to hire me. I'm going to solve their problem. And so building a website was about building effective websites in, in this case, getting people to convert. And from a word of mouth perspective, it's about helping people understand that this can be a predictable form of revenue for their business or a predictable form of increased opportunity in a way. They've got to track it. They need to know how many word of mouth referrals they're getting. They need to know uh, where their business is coming from because it's important to know if you want to focus on a particular niche like the IT professionals or if you want to focus on your clients because that's where your referrals come from now. So mm -hmm. you do need to know that. When did you have that aha moment that said, wait a minute, this word of mouth is producing so many more clients and uh, better quality clients than any kind of uh, digital marketing that you might have been doing? Well, Neil, I will tell you that that aha moment came, uh, <laughs> it came in, it came two months before I sold my agency. Wow. That's how late in the game it actually came. And here's, and here's the interesting thing. I hated cold calling and I hated traditional sales, right? But I love networking and I love being a connector. I love introducing people to other people. That's, that is something that I think I was just born with as a trait. You know, it's just ingrained in my personality. And so I always defaulted to networking rather than doing a lot of paid advertising. And we did it over the years. We bought leads. We put a lot of effort into SEO or paid ads. And, and my previous experience prior to owning my agency is I, I did a, a stint at uh, Lycos.com, the search engine. 
and I was working on their paid advertising team. So I understood everything there was to know about pay-per-click marketing. Um, but I, I just didn't love it. It just didn't, it just didn't feel like we were having a lot of great success with it. It's not to say that there aren't people that are, but it didn't fit with me and my personality. I just really love the relationships a lot more. And so that also meant that it was a longer sales cycle for me, but I was okay with that. So over the years, I knew that that was how I was operating my business and I was finding more success that way for me. Uh, and then how this information sort of came out and I ended up writing the book was, I, you know, uh, I participated in masterminds for many years and, and CEO level groups that I found were incredibly effective. And I had a mastermind around the world of speaking and what they started to do was started to talk to me about my next speech. And turns out, uh, as they questioned me about the success of my company, I started t giving them answers like, well, it doesn't everybody do this? Doesn't everybody care about other people? Doesn't everybody, isn't everybody a giver? And their response was unanimously no. No. It's that they said we should all be doing it, but we're not. And I just sat there dumbfounded. I'm like, wait, so you're telling me the stuff I'm doing to care about other people, other people aren't doing? And they're like, yeah, no. People don't send handwritten thank you cards. Hmm. So, yeah, and that was, kind of, that was kind of my question about the aha uh, moment yeah. that, you know, if you've always been a giver and you realize that that is what is working for you, you know, there are so many people out there that are just, you know, what's in it for me? What can I get out of this deal that they never, you know, have that aha moment to, you know, if you help enough people uh, get what they want, you're going to have everything you want. Is, uh, that's right. That's right. And that's the approach by which I live my life, Neil. And so mm -hmm. it's interesting that that's how I obviously end up writing a book about it. But in, in running an entire business conceptually on that now, you know, which is a struggle sometimes because word of mouth referrals and giving, it takes time to see results from that. If you're tracking the results, it's going to be a problem, right? Um, right? You need to track results from marketing and advertising. You do need to track where people are sending you referrals from and know who your, your, your biggest raving fans are. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. In fact, I use a mind map to track how my customers come to me and through what means they came. So I literally will draw strings between each connection point person to see where they go back. So for instance, let's just say you and I met at a conference, right? And then you introduced me to person B like three months later. And then person B introduced me to person C like six months later, right? Now we're talking that's like nine months, but there's three people in that string. I would put that on a mind map when person C did some business with me or sent me a referral, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would be able to go back and visually see where these people came from. And I could say, okay, hey, that conference produced, just like somebody would for marketing and advertising, mail and postcard or doing a, a, a Facebook ad or a Google ad, what is the ROI? I can actually look at my mind map and say, wow, that conference produced 10 really great connections, which produced 30 additional second level connections, which produced overall a series of transactions. Yeah. And I can say, I, I'll go back to that conference. Even if the conference doesn't have great content, I'll go back to that conference because the networking was so solid. Right, and that that is often the number one thing that people get out of these conferences, and why they go is to network with the people there, like-minded people, and so much business is done at these conferences. Yep. It's, it's really great. Absolutely, yeah, and I mean, networking is touted as one of the three top things that are on every conference website. Right, they talk about coming to to get the great content and come to network. Right. So there are people that never even they go to conferences and, uh, and I have a LinkedIn friend that was telling me the other day he was at a blockchain conference and he skipped out on 
the conference because he didn't want to listen to the rest of the speakers that day. Uh, and he was going back to his room. He changed in his clothes and, and meeting up with all the people in the hallway that he met. You know, there are people that don't even attend the sessions. They stand in the hallways and meet all the people, you know? Right. And that's the value, right? The relationships are the value. And so for me, my, the way I operate, the way I work, content generation is pulled out of me. I work collaboratively, collaboratively with other people. So when they're mm-hmm. asking me deeper dive questions, while those are sometimes difficult to hear and difficult to answer, that's where I get my best content from. Right. Well, let's talk about the book. It's called More, uh, Word of Mouth Referrals, Lifelong Customers and Raving Fans. Tell us what we can expect to find inside the cover. Yeah, so, so inside the cover, you know, there's a, there's a couple chapters in there that sort of define what your personal care package is, how I've identified it basically is how you care for other people. And there's four components to um, creating more word of mouth referrals. Um, and if you do these pillars, as I call them, then uh, you can effectively get them on a more systematic basis. So one is over delivery. Um, two is listening to other people and, and what they say, but also what they post on social media. So we'll get into that with your digital audience here. Um, three is surprise. How do you surprise people in your life? And four is non-self-serving acts. So what do you do that have, for others that has no benefit or bearing on you? So those four things are what produce more word of mouth referrals. They're, they're caring focused. And then the rest of the book um, is 40 different things you can do to connect with people on a deeper level. Also associated with each lesson, as I call them, is a tip to go a little bit deeper. So it might be things like bring coffee to your client. Well, if you listen and you watch posts on social media, you know what type of coffee your client likes. Now, there may be listeners now thinking, you got to be kidding me. This guy wrote a book about bringing coffee to clients. I can tell you there are very few people that do this. And so when you do it, you are remembered and you are top of mind for your clients, right? And isn't that the number one reason why you do uh, advertising and marketing in the first place? Exactly. You're right. Yeah. So, it, you know, that's just one thing. Here's an example. Say the person despises Starbucks and loves Dunkin'. How do you know that? Because you become friends with them on social media and you listen with your eyes. You see what they post. Mm-hmm. In pictures, they're holding Dunkin' Cups, not Starbucks cups, or vice versa. Maybe their office is the third office of Starbucks, and they're always in Starbucks, right? And so you can, you, you can know and pay attention to those things, and that in and of itself is caring, you know? Um, I call it social media uh, intelligence, or espionage, I like to call it, right? Where you're kind of finding out what people are all about because they post it all the time on social media. You know? It's amazing to me the number of people that tell me that they want to keep business and personal separate so they don't connect on Facebook. And... Yeah, I I think that's a a big mistake. And I know everybody wants to create these uh, pages and groups and things like that. But most business, I would say, is done via the personal page still. Yeah. And he, but even if it's not business that's being done, Neil, it's connection that's being done. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, like, here's the thing. Like, if I'm in a group, uh, you don't know when my birthday is. Right. But mm-hmm. you know when my birthday is if we're Facebook friends because Facebook tells you when my birthday is. Right. But here's the problem with the birthday algorithm, so to speak, in Facebook. Is that on our birthdays, what happens? We get 250 posts on our wall, right? And so 250 people just post happy birthday. But how many cards do we get in the mail? Oh, not any these days. (laughs) So, So imagine, Neil, for a second that I sent you a card. Think about the grin on your face Mm -hmm. that you would have if you got a card on your birthday from a Facebook friend, nonetheless, right? And so you might say, well, but I don't get it. How does that lead to word of mouth referrals? Look, I, 
if I am showing up, the, the rule of thumb is on email. If I show up in your inbox, I'm top of mind, right? If I show up on Facebook ads, I'm top of mind. If I show up on Google ads, I'm top of mind. If I do retargeting, I'm top of mind. But the problem is we're inundated with those things. I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. I'm simply saying those are marketing and advertising. And I want people to start caring, right? And so to do that, when we care, we cut through the noise. And the byproduct, all all of that, Neil, is referrals. Because people will care about you. They like you because you like them. And they will refer you business because they don't want you to go out of business. They want you to be around. So it's a byproduct of that. Excellent. And there's, uh, you know, so many things that you can do that are just, you know, long lost arts, like using the the regular mail, like you said, Mm -hmm. that really captures people's attention. And they don't forget you. They don't forget those kinds of things. And I'm sure every time they see a Facebook post from you, uh, from that point on, they're going to be willing to share it. And uh, yeah. you know, even well, if, and, you know, if I could give you a, a quick case study of this, I had a, a, a friend that was referring me. She was in South Carolina. She was referring us business. She's a, a marketing and advertising agency, but she didn't do websites. She sent a, uh, websites out, uh, outsourced them. And uh, I was reading her blog. She's a great, great blog writer. And I was reading her blog one day and buried in the middle of the article was a story uh, or, or a sentence about her love of chocolate-covered bacon. <laughs> so what do I do, Neil? What do you think I did? Oh, I'm sure you find a way to send some chocolate-covered bacon in That's the mail. That's <laughs> right. I, I spent an hour with one of my employees sourcing chocolate-covered bacon, mailed it to Ronnie Bartle's house. And within, what, three hours of her receiving it, she's got pictures all over every social channel possible. People will rave about you because you're different. You're, you're unique. In that case, I listened to what she was saying. Even though I read it, I used my eyes to listen and I surprised her. Big, wow. big thing, right? And so when you do these little things for your clients, and by, mind you, it didn't, it, the, the, the card I mailed or, or the thing that came from the bacon and whatever didn't have my company brand all over it. It wasn't a promotional or marketing item. It, it was just chocolate covered bacon, you know? Mm. And these are the types of things you can do with your clients all through the, you know, the digital world um, to, to cut through the noise. Right. And it's, it's some, somehow akin to some of the, the direct mail mm-hmm. marketing, especially some of these lumpy mails, mm-hmm. but they, they have a specific marketing message along with uh, the package that gets your attention. But you're, you're really just in the relationship building aspect of it. Yes, you nailed it right there, Neil. It's relationship building, right? Because lumpy mail isn't that. It's bulk items that are mailed to all, the, all different people, but it's the same item with the same message, right? Mm. And so, so what happens at Christmas time here in the U.S. is we – we gift give we give gifts to others that they would want to receive but yet for some reason in business we don't do that right we give people things with our logo and our brand on them that we right. think that they want right but they don't really want that stuff um somebody said to me hey what if i was a coffee drinker would it would it would an ideal like branded coffee mug be great and i said i said you know what would be best would be an unbranded coffee mug for you. You don't need to have the brand on it. But if you absolutely refuse to do an unbranded coffee mug, then yes, a branded coffee mug is fine. Right? So there are, I'm not a hard line person on this. Like I would rather you do something than nothing. So like if you claim you don't have enough time or you want to use branded stationery because you bought 5,000 pieces of it, then use branded stationery. And then once you're done using branded stationery, just buy some some general cards from Amazon and 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 handwrite the cards after that. Use the branded stationery until until you use it up. I, I'm not a proponent of having it cost you extra. Um, most people think that this takes a lot more time to do simply because it takes more time to write an e uh, 
a note card than it does to write an email. But the reality is not much more time, right? They just think it's a lot of time. So, so go into that in a little bit more detail because I'm sure that's a concern with the listeners is that it just seems like it's so much time that this would take uh, to get results. So, so mm -hmm. talk to me about you know, the daily investment that uh, you would put into this kind of uh, marketing or relationship building and also you know, how long does it take really to see kind of some measurable results from that? Sure, sure. So the first thing is, how much time do I put in? Uh, well, not much now because uh, I built the habit of it, right? And mm -hmm. so it's not any more added time in my view. It's more a habit now. Uh, that said, it took a little bit more time to get moving. So what I always suggest to people is you pick no more than six people. No more than six people to build a relation, a deeper relationship with. As you do this, you still need to do your marketing, advertising, and don't think for a minute that with my speaking business, I don't do marketing and advertising. Uh, I do, right? Because it's a new business and you can't open up a new business on day one and expect to have referrals on day two. That it doesn't work. So to your point about how long it takes, it's all dependent on how much or how deep uh, the relationship is and, and whether the person is aware. So there's this thing called your reticular activator, Neil, that and the best example I can give you is if, if you're thinking about buying a new car and you said, okay, I think I want to buy a new red pickup truck. You don't see them anywhere. Then you go buy a red pickup truck and guess what? You see them everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's your reticular activator. So here's what happens with caring. And once you start connecting on Facebook, you'll start to realize, oh, wait, that person said this, that person said that right on their Facebook page, Right. Hey, maybe I could do something about that. I recently saw uh, a friend I connected with um, has no, no bearing at all, no ability to refer me business. She's, she's in a master's, she's getting her master's degree in college. She's much younger than me, but we went to the same high school and we connected at, um, at reunion. And so I, I met her there and then I, I connected with her on Facebook. And then I saw a recent post that somebody had, stolen her bath mat out of the launcher, laundromat machine in her building because she lives in the city. And uh, she was really devastated by it. It was a specific one and had a saying on it. And I Googled the saying and found it on Amazon and I bought her a bath mat. <laughs> like, it, it, you got to remember, it has no, I'm not thinking about whether or not she's ever going to refer me business. I just want her to have that bath mat because she was so torn apart by it, right? Now, you might say to yourself, well, okay, Matt, I get it, but you're going to start caring about everyone. You know what? I, I care about four or five people in a deeper way like this in gifting per week. Sometimes it's a, a gift of a handwritten card. Sometimes it is an actual gift that costs 20 or $30. But, um, you know, I'm a person, I have to throttle that back sometimes because I want to give to everybody. I don't have all the money in the world to do that, right? So, I, that's when I, I pull out a box of bulk cards that I bought and I hand write notes to people. Another great way to connect on a deeper level is video messaging, right? And so for your digital techies who, who listen to the podcast, this is perfect for them. Like send text messages with videos or send, I use um, bomb bomb video email, right? I send messages that are pertinent to that person. You know how long it takes me to do a message like that, Neil? It's like 30 seconds. I don't want the video to be longer than that anyway, but um you can send bomb bomb video messages to people that connect to you on LinkedIn and it takes you less than a minute to do that. Well, you certainly did that to me. We connected on LinkedIn and I got a message from you and it really does stand out. It stands out. It right, because no one, no one else is doing it, right, Neil? That's right, yeah. I mean, people just uh, don't feel like uh, they have the time to do these sorts of things, but it really does make a tremendous difference in building those relationships. Yeah, so, it, so to get the habit going, here's what I suggest. Um, you send one card a week for the next six weeks to the six people you chose. That's it. That's all I want you to do. And after the six weeks, you'll start to see a pattern develop. Because what's going to happen is the people that receive your cards are going to start to communicate with you, 
right? So if you mm-hmm. think about how that Facebook algorithm and LinkedIn algorithm works, it's that the more activity and involvement you have with another person, the more they show you. This is kind of like the old school way of doing it, right? So you send a card, next thing you know what's going to happen, the person's going to, uh, you know, creep out your uh, Facebook page, right? Or your LinkedIn page and see what you're up right. to these days. They have a reason to now. And they may even send you a message uh, on one of those messaging platforms thanking you. They might text you a thank you. Um, and just reply with your welcome. That's it. And move on about your day. It doesn't add any extra time, Neil, to your day. And it makes you a much happier person. It is a powerful, powerful thing. Really? All right, Matt. Well, there's so much more to talk about here. I wish we had a great deal more time, but uh, you can find out a lot more information from Matt Ward in his book, which is more word of mouth referrals, lifelong customers, and raving fans. Matt, if somebody wants to reach out to you, uh, you know, to talk or to get your book, what is the best way for them to do that? Absolutely, Neil. Thanks for asking. Uh, I My website is mattwardspeaks.com. Uh, you can email me. My email is matt at breakthrough-champion.com. Um, and uh, the book is on Amazon, both in uh, Kindle version on the ebook and also on paperback and soon to be out on Audible. Well, I'm definitely going to have to pick that one up. Uh, We just scratched the surface here, but there's definitely so much more to learn and to do to get those referrals coming in. Matt, this has been excellent conversation. Really enjoyed the content here. Enjoyed talking to you. And uh, thank you very much for being my guest on the Trust Factor Radio today. Thanks for having me, Neil. I greatly appreciate it. And to our listening audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. You've been listening to the Trust Factor Radio with Neil Howe. To learn about the resources mentioned in the show and to listen to past episodes, go to thetrustfactorradio.com. To get a copy of the book, The Trust Factor, go to thetrustfactorbook.com. If you are ready to act now and build your authority, credibility, and trust, schedule a consultation with Neil at theauthorityarchitect.com.